we did have to do a little bit of custom fab work for this large cold case radiator. I know in the previous Nova video, I mentioned that I was hoping we would be able to start the motor in this next one. Unfortunately, due to coming down with COVID and then getting through Christmas, we didn't really get to work on the car as much as we had hoped to. But thankfully, getting over COVID, Christmas is now behind us, so we're gonna get back to work on this car. But I did want to do a little update video on what we did get to work on in the last few weeks. So let's take a look at this motor and see what's new. So you'll see here we have both of the radiator hoses attached, the upper and lower. We have the fuel line that goes from the fuel pump to the carburetor. That is now bolted in. Bolted in, screwed in, whatever the term is for connecting a hose like that. We have the temperature sending unit in the head on this side. And then the driver's side has the plug in since there's technically two places you can put a sending unit in the head, but one on the driver's side, one on the passenger side. We put the sending unit on the passenger side. So we put the plug in here on the driver's side. I'm not sure if that was in the previous video, but we have this so that we can get a hose going from here to there. We also have the piece back here screwed in so we can get the lines running from the back of the motor. And we have the coil bracket mounted up right here. On the temperature sending unit, the plug that's on the driver's side of the head and the other pieces that we've put in the intake, we used a thread sealant, it's this one right here. It's not thread locker, it is made by Permatex, but what this does is it acts like the thread wrap that you can get for other types of sealing purposes. But I've read a lot about that thread wrap leaking over time and there's a lot of recommendations to use this Permatex high temperature thread sealant when you're doing things like this in the motor. So as always, not a sponsor, but it's a little tip that I found online. So I thought I'd share it with anyone watching this video that might be working on uh, similar components for their projects. And the fuel line that we put in, I also did a little bit of work on. So this is what the fuel line looked like when we got it. I don't know why or what it is, but there always seems to be some type of coating on these fuel lines. I'm assuming it's to protect the line while it's in storage and being shipped. But when you've got a lot of shiny chrome and stainless steel, and you're building something that is going to be used to take to car shows, this just doesn't really cut it. So what we did was we used a stainless steel Scotch-Brite pad. We ran that along the fuel line to get the majority of that residue off. And then once we did that, we used this Mother's Mag and Aluminum Polish to shine and protect automotive metals. And the way this works is you put it on a clean microfiber cloth. Then you rub it along the metal, whether it's a piece of aluminum, fuel line, whatever it is. For us, it was this fuel line. So you rub it along the fuel line until it starts to get coated in this black residue. And then once that black residue is coating the section that you were working on, you take a clean microfiber cloth and you wipe it off. And when you wipe that black residue off, you're left with a really shiny metal. It does say in the package that it doesn't work on all metals. It says that if you do not see the black residue appear while you're working on it, 
that that metal is not polishable. So just keep that in mind. I really liked this polish that we used. It worked really well. We actually used it on a couple of other pieces once we saw how well it worked. I was hoping we could use it on the AC compressor and we tried, but it just didn't really do anything. It did have the black residue, but it didn't really polish it up. So I don't know what's different about that, but we weren't able to polish that up like I was hoping we could. But again, Mothers is not a sponsor. I don't have any sponsors for my videos. Maybe one day I get a big enough YouTube channel that someone offers a sponsor or something, I don't know. But I just wanted to share this with anyone that might want to shine up some fuel line or something in their project and just let them know that Mothers works really well. So this little tub is about 12 or 13 bucks at AutoZone. So check that out. But now let's get to that custom fab that I mentioned at the intro to this video. So if you look down here under the radiator, you'll see this little support that goes all the way across. So what this is, is it's two pieces of fairly thick aluminum and it has a lip on the end. It's kind of hard to see the lip because we painted these black but it comes out and then there's this little lip right here. That lip comes up around the rubber piece here. So the rubber piece is sitting in the low part and then the lip comes up around the front of it and the same goes for the far side. We did this because this radiator being wider than stock comes out past the bottom of the radiator support. So we wanted to get something under here that would kind of keep it from leaning and wiggling and wobbling and any other word you want to use for something that's not secured. So we took these pieces of metal, we measured them back for the depth that we would need, and we cut them and we used rivets to mount them to the bottom of the radiator support all the way across. In the front of the radiator support, there's rubber pieces along that we put under the aluminum to keep it from rattling and vibrating and shaking while the car is running. And with this lip, it actually works out really well because it's in the place that will work for clipping the fan shroud to it. So that ended up working out really well. It adds a lot more support to the radiator. So if there's anyone that's putting an aftermarket radiator, you don't want to buy a whole new radiator support, that is an option for you. If that's something you want to do just to add a little bit of extra support and just kind of help hold things together and mount things really good in your car. Well, yeah, that is the custom fab work that we did. That is the update that I have right now for the car. Hopefully now that I'm getting over COVID and my family is getting over COVID and Christmas is now behind us. We can actually start getting on this motor again and have it ready to start hopefully in the next video that I do, but I don't want to get too ambitious. Uh, as I said previously in other videos, we don't get to work on this as much as we would like. So hopefully in a shortly upcoming video, whether it's the next one, the one after it, something like that, we'll be able to get this motor started and fired up for the first time and we'll get to hear this thing run because I'm really excited for that and I hope that you are too. But if you like this video, you liked any of the tips that I provided about the thread sealant or the aluminum polish or anything like that, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you want to see how this project continues if you haven't already. Thank you for watching. This is Southpaw Garage signing out.